Hello and welcome to Tektronics. Today we're going to discuss the effects of low and high capacitance probing on your circuit. Many people don't realize that passive probes induce capacitance onto their circuit and ultimately change their signal. This is why active probes are a better alternative and normally cost more. I'm going to show the effective difference between an active and passive probe and how Tektronics has new passive probes to help reduce this loading effect. So now I'm going to illustrate a general Schmidt trigger that has a feedback resistor and generates a simple oscillating clock. This has a V output that we're going to monitor on the scope and then the V input is where we're going to load it with different probes. Probes are in parallel a capacitor and a resistor that affect your circuit. This is illustrated here in green. We've got a capacitor that is going to be C2 and we have a resistor that I'm going to call R2. Now, for basic electronics, you know that capacitors in parallel add. So I'm going to call this CT, and this CT is going to be C1 plus C2. This is going to be the effects of capacitance loading on my circuit, and you're going to see this later in a demonstration. Now, for the Smith trigger, the frequency is going to be about 1 over RC. But when we add this extra probing, that's going to be this loading effect. This is going to be R1 times C1 plus C2. Now let's go demonstrate this on an oscilloscope by actually visually seeing the effects of this capacitance loading. At my scope, I've got my Smith trigger output being measured at channel 1. As you can see, with no loading probe connected, I'm reading about 75 MHz. Now I'm going to demonstrate what a general passive probe of 8 picofarads load to my circuit does. Now as you can see, with this being connected, my frequency is going to change quite a bit, and I'm measuring about 41 megahertz. This is what the standard effects of passive probes does. I'm going to save this as a reference waveform so that we can reference this with other loading effects. Next I'm going to take a Tektronix active probe that has 0.8 picofarads and apply this to my circuit. As you can see, with low capacitance, I'm not getting much loading effect. I'm measuring about 74 megahertz. This is very normal for an active probe and why they're very special. I'm going to save it as a reference waveform too and we're going to be able to compare it with the last probe. Now this last probe is Tektronix TPP1000. It's got a capacitance of 3.9 picofarads and as you can see it doesn't affect my signal as much. I've got 51 megahertz on screen. I'm going to save this as a reference waveform so we can compare all three of these probes. Now when I disconnect this, you'll see that comparing all the probes, I now have a standard passive probe compared to an active probe to the new TPP-1000, and there's quite a bit of significant loading effects. This is key to remember the different loading effects while you're measuring circuitry. For more information about Tektronix, please visit www.tektronix.com forward slash support.